Now you can do it. <laughs> Good morning, Calvary Chapel young people. We are so glad to meet with you again this week. Uh, we're coming from uh, Rockport, Texas. We are some 1,800 miles away from you, but you're in our hearts every moment and every day. Ask your parents to help look us up on the map. You can see us. We're right on the Gulf Coast. Actually, it's the Gulf of Mexico, and uh, we, uh, we enjoy the weather here. While you're going to be in the 60s, we're going to be in the 90s. And we're going to try and catch some fish. Yeah, we'll probably go fishing Monday, late Monday or early Tuesday. But let's talk about last week's lesson. Do you remember that we were talking about Peter and John and they healed a lame man? And once a crowd gathered and saw what had happened to the lame man, that he was totally healed, the crowd grew, they got excited about what was going on, and Peter took this opportunity to share the wonderful news of Jesus Christ. He went through a whole story and how Jesus was crucified on the cross, rose from the dead, and through that death and resurrection, he offered a sinless, forgiving life for all of us. And this week, we're going to study about another disciple of Christ. His name is Philip. We don't talk a lot about him in the Bible, but this is a very important story because he is going to share the good news of Jesus Christ with a... Uh, gentleman who's an Ethiopian. He was a high government official. In fact, he was a treasurer of the country of Ethiopia. All right, Miss Julia. So have you ever had a strong feeling that you wanted to share the good news about Jesus Christ with another person? Today, we're going to learn a lesson. We're going to read about an encounter that Philip had with this gentleman. And it's going to encourage us and make us feel a little more confident and, and understand about how we might be able to share the story of Jesus Christ and, and the good news of our salvation through him. And that's important for us to know that. And it's important for us to feel confident when we share the good news of Jesus. So here we go. We're going to start in Acts chapter 8, verse 26. I'm going to read through 29. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose, and he went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship. He was reading the, uh, the uh, reading Isaiah, the prophet. Then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake his chariot. So sometimes when we are thinking about Jesus, and sometimes when we're not thinking about anything, God kind of pushes us in the direction that he wants us to go. And sometimes it's very clear, like he said to Philip, I want you to go, overtake his chariot. That means get caught up with his chariot and maybe have it stop so he could talk to them. Sometimes it's really clear like that, and sometimes it's more kind of a nudge or a, or a whisper. Sometimes it's not always quite that crystal clear. Well, why do you think um, God sent Philip to talk to this man? Well, I, I think that he wanted to have somebody talk to the official because he had already become a Jew. He, he already was reading the Bible. We'll know a little more about that in a minute. Um, and, that, and that God was preparing his heart to receive Jesus. And, and I, I think that the Ethiopian man was, was searching for God. And I think God sent somebody to him to help him better understand how to find him and know more about him. I think that happens a lot. I and we, so. do, we just don't recognize it as often as we should. So we read in uh, Acts 8, 26 through 29, 
So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, Do you understand what you're reading? And he said, How can I? Unless someone guides me. And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. Sometimes as we're looking and studying God's word, we don't understand it. Wouldn't you know when Philip caught up with him, he was studying the book of Isaiah, but he was studying the section that talked about the coming of Jesus Christ or the prophecy of Jesus Christ. So we talked about prophecies and we talked about prophets last time, didn't we? Yes, we did. You did. Yeah. And could you remind me, please, what is a prophecy? A prophecy is a God-given ability to see and talk about the future plans of God. God will reveal his word through his prophets. Hmm. Do you know who the last prophet was of the Bible? I do. This is a quiz. This is a quiz, and I do. The last, most of the prophets that we read about in the Bible are in the Old Testament, like right. Isaiah. Right. Which is what right. the gentleman from Ethiopia was studying, right? This last prophet is actually in the Old, in the New Testament, the Testament that talks about Jesus' birth and his life. And that prophet's name, do you remember who this is? Because I think we've talked about this before. It was John the Baptist. Yeah. He liked honey and wore camel hair clothing. He did. He did. So in these next verses, Philip is going to explain the verses that the gentleman was reading out of Isaiah. And we're going to read through 32 to 34. And the place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before the shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch said to Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Of himself or of some other man? Who is he talking about here? In, in these couple of verses. Is he talking about some kind of special sheep? Was there a sheep with gold fleece? or No, because in, 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 remember they talked about a lamb. They, and, and in the New Testament we talk about the Lamb of God. And he's talking, of course, about Jesus. Yes, he is. He was prophesied about in the Old Testament, meaning the prophets talked about him in the Old Testament. And this gentleman at this point is only studying the Old Testament and he's reading these prophecies which he doesn't un fully understand and he's not aware of Jesus and uh, so the, so Philip helped him to understand and you know what I think this is a great example of? What? I, I think that we can rely on Jesus to use us and he will help us tell other people about him. He really tells us that in his word, that he will give us the wisdom to speak. We don't have to worry about the words or think too hard on them. But we do need to study God's word and to be sound in our faith. Now in 835 we read, Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at the scriptures preached Jesus to him. He explained to who Jesus was. It's sometimes scary. Yeah. Yeah. To think about sharing Jesus Christ with a stranger or even a friend or a family member. But we know that God's promise is that he will give us the knowledge and the words. Question. Does Jesus love those who share his good news? 
Oh, absolutely. He is just thrilled when we are obedient and follow his words and when we are sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with whoever we should, he puts before us. And he will do it suddenly or he will do it like a hammer sometimes like he did with the Ethiopian. It was pinpoint, go to this man and share the word with him. So let's carry on into verses 36 through 38. If you're sharing along with us in the Bible, that's where you want to go. The Bible tells us, Now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, Here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still, and both Philip and the eunuch went down to the water, and he baptized him. So he somehow knew. We don't know how he knew about baptism, but he saw the water, and he was curious about it. So he, what is baptism? What does it mean when we talk about to be baptized? Well, it's an outward expression. It's, it's something that is, it, people can see happening. It happens so that people can um, watch what's happening. And it, it's, it's, it's an outward sign that one has become a believer. And our practice is usually one with water where the person baptizing the new believer pours water on them, typically on their head. Sometimes they go all the way under the water. But it's, it, isn't, it, it isn't required to save us. This isn't, this isn't what makes us become saved. But it is a sign. It's kind of like a picture of what's happening inside our heart, one that other people can see. We're kind of dying to our old life. Yes, And rising exactly. anew. Exactly, exactly. Uh, was the official, you think, this uh, official man, was he ready to be baptized? Yeah, I, I think he was. I, I think, he, you know, he had made an, a, a profession. He had said out loud that he believed in Jesus Christ and had accepted him as his Savior and wanted to keep him in his heart. And, and that's, what, that's what's needed to be baptized. So probably the whole reason Philip was sent to him, first he converted to become a Jew. Then God was preparing his heart to become a Christian. Right. And Philip was the tool that God chose to use to share the good news and the plan of salvation to this individual. Yes, and remember that Philip was excuse me, the gentleman was already reading the book of Isaiah. So he was already believing in God and he was already seeking God's word. And so Philip was that next step that, that God sent to him to help him introduce the, the gentleman to Jesus Christ. I think it's a beautiful well, picture. Yeah. Beautiful story. Now we read in Acts 39 and 40 it says, now when they came up out of the water the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more and when, and he went on rejoicing but Philip was found at Astos and passing through he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea so what do you think the man was thinking when all of a sudden he comes up Philip was there one moment, putting him under the water, brings him up, and then Philip is gone. I, I think he must have been surprised. I, I think he must have been amazed. I, I think he must have asked, what power can do this? So we see, why do you think he did it so quickly, though? Why couldn't Philip hang around for a few days? Well, I think, I think God, God, God's work that he had for Philip was done, was to meet the gentleman, was to help introduce him along his path. He was on a journey with God. 
and he was reading Isaiah, and Philip helped him go further into that journey and accept Jesus Christ. And I think Philip's work was done, and God said, next stop for you. But I also think that it was important for God to demonstrate to the gentleman his power. Yeah. And scripture tells us he was amazed. I'm sure he was. I would have been amazed. I would have been amazed. shocked. He would have probably had to pull me out of the Just water. like that, Philip was gone. Okay. We always need to be ready to share God's work, no matter where we are we or what we're doing. God can impress upon our hearts at any time the need to share with somebody. He puts somebody in front of us that needs, whether it's clarification of what a Bible verse means or if it's the plan of salvation. So we please God when we're open and willing to do what God directs. He will talk to us. He will touch our hearts. He will give us the thought that we need to address a certain individual. And we need to respond in a positive way to that. And how do you think we get ready to be able to share God's Word? That's always a big question with me. Well, Rudy, you know me. You know I'm going to want to change my clothes. I'm going to want to study. I'm going to want to get organized about it. Um, and I'm going to get all kinds of busy. But really, that's, that's just not necessary. What's necessary is uh, basically about four steps. What you need to do to be able to talk to somebody about Jesus is you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and give him space in your heart. It's a big deal and it's a very special deal. We need to study God's word so that we know what we believe and can talk about it and try not to get confused. He'll give us the words, but we need to have been in Jesus Christ's word. In, in we the, need in to the build the foundation. We do. We have that yeah. knowledge. And we need to pray about it. We need to pray for God's guidance. There are all kinds of questions that can come up when you talk to somebody about Jesus. And, and God will help prepare that, prepare us for that. And the fourth thing is we need to share what God has done in our lives. So we accept Jesus in our heart. We study his word. We pray for him for guidance. And then we share what God has done in our lives. And it's a conversation that you have with somebody probably you know, but maybe you don't. And, and it gives them an opportunity to know Jesus and to have that, that peace of salvation in their hearts. It's, well, a, it's an amazing thing. That very special uh, story to share, when you, especially when you get to share what Christ has done in your life. Indeed. I know I can speak for Julia and I that he has done marvelous things in our lives and continues to do marvelous things in our lives on a daily basis. And we are so grateful for that. And we didn't know that we would be making videos to share Jesus with other people. No, we didn't. <laughs> Nor were we prepared for we, that. We're, you know, <laughs> we're not quite ready to be YouTube stars, but we're getting there. Um, but we know how what a blessing it is for us to be able to share Jesus with you guys. And it's been a blessing for us to do. This is taking a slightly different form, and we look forward to that day when we can be there with you in person again. But in the meantime, we, we give great thanks for this, for this blessing that we've received. Yes, we do. We do. Would you like to lead us in closing prayer? I would. Dear Heavenly Father, Again, we lift up this message to you. We ask you to prepare the hearts of all those who will hear it, no matter when they hear it. We ask you to give us the discipline to study your word and to tuck it away in our hearts and give us eyes and ears that are open to hear somebody asking to have a conversation with us. Keep, our, keep us ready, Lord. Uh, when that time comes, give us the peace and the words that you promise so that we can share the good news as others have shared with us and by which we've been so blessed. Lord, I ask you to hold 
us, our church, these kids, their families, and their communities in your hands. So many different things happening these days that are hard to hear, that are sometimes hard to, to just plain deal with. So we ask you to keep us safe, keep us secure in you, keep us close to your word, and keep us reaching out to others at every chance we get. We say all this with praise in your name and with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 See you next Sunday. Bye.